Hello, hi, namaste and vanakkam. I'm Sushmita and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to tell you about asana and how it's basically philosophy in action. I know that sounds a little bit absurd because philosophy is all about ideas and big thoughts and action is all about doing stuff, right? And how does asana or physical posture even relate to these two? So this is what we're going to dive into in today's video. Firstly, you know, I want to tell you a little bit of a story because I was introduced to philosophy much, much before I was introduced to asana or physical posture. In my early teens, I was exposed to these ideas of Vedanta philosophy and I realized that actually these ideas are really abstract and don't really make sense to this 15 year old that's trying to just figure out what to do with her life. And then I realized only after I did my first practice of primary series that they both actually lead to the same goal in some way. So Advaita philosophy or non-dual philosophy posits that the little self is no different from the ultimate self, the grand self with a capital S. And when we think of it in practical sense, Asana or physical postures are actually the most tangible way to experience that non-duality, to experience a state where there is no difference between this thinking thing up here and a feeling thing down here. It is a state when you're doing downward dog and you don't necessarily feel this difference between your left and right sides. It's this place of just being in the state of the asana. And the way to achieve that is through the medium of our awareness. Awareness is not just attention. Awareness is more like a flow of attention. And when we add in these qualities of vigilance, when we add in this quality of present mindedness, we realize that through the medium of attention, we can in fact in those moments integrate the mind and body in any given moment. Now, you and I may not be as the same as a sage sitting on a rock for many, many years, just sitting like a Buddha, super quiet and really like finding this sense of enlightenment. But you and I can experience the same experience of non-duality because it's the same fundamental principles that underlie both meditation and performing yogic postures. And I know this might be a little bit hard and difficult to understand at first, but if you think about it, we're doing the same things. We're working with mind control, we're working with the sensations of the body, and we're training the attention, we're training the vigilance, we're training this awareness to come in and permeate the physical structure. And in that process, we're actually breaking this barrier between the mind and body. And that's why asana is philosophy in action. Everywhere I turn, I literally read that yoga is more than just postures. Of the 196 yoga sutras, only three talk about asanas. So why is modern yoga so obsessed with it? Why is it so important that we even do asana? Why is it that when you go to a yoga class, you basically have breathing, postures and relaxation and that's it? How come that we don't really understand the philosophy or we don't do much more in our modern society? The reason is, and I think that there is a lot of value in posture itself as a tool or a medium to achieve meditation. It's not just that all these postures are for the performance of Padmasana, so you can sit like a rock for many hours. It's also that the process itself, the process of learning these postures themselves become meditative become a reason for us to turn inward. And each of these postures, there's so many, you know, it provides variety for every different type of temperament. Have you been to a hot yoga class where, you know, the instructor is giving you different, different types of asanas that you've never even heard of? And then you go to a hatha class and they're named completely differently. It's built for different temperaments. It's also built for the nature that you come in with into this world. And that's the beauty of it, right? For me, it feels like going and being in a kid in a candy store with so much variety, so much opportunity, but each asana is just a portal to access the same thing. Each asana is just a portal to access this uninterrupted concentration. 
to achieve this kind of state where the mind and body are truly integrated. Each of them is a portal to access this state of Advaita or non-duality. So when we perform these asanas in the correct way, in a way that integrates the philosophy into the actual practice, we can realize that maybe the performance of asanas themselves will be the meditation, will be our tool for progress. And I think that a lot of us have a lot of tamas or lethargy in our bodies and asanas are a perfect tool to sort of whip you back into shape, get that energy moving and really try and be more rajasic, which is activity. For those of us that have a lot of activity in our daily lives, like me, for example, then we need to learn to channelize it and learn to like direct it without it going in different directions, right? And ultimately, if we do reach the state of being sattvic in our daily lives or having this state of equanimity, then we must have the skill to sustain it. Right? We must have the skill to be able to not just stay in the state of the asana, not just be steady in the state of the asana, but also find joy, also find contentment. Because why would we do it if it's just contorting our bodies into different shapes and not really enjoying it? Because each of these asanas, each of these compromised positions serve as a way for us to train our responses, to train our habitual ways of responding when life puts us in these situations, when life conforms us into these really twisted positions and your hands are tied, but you have the opportunity to free your mind. You have the opportunity to create space with the breath and you have the opportunity to respond with calmness, with poise and with a sense of real, really like deeply moving this energy and moving out of the asana as gracefully as you entered it. And this is really a training that the yogic postures provide for us. So asana can be a fantastic tool for most of us to access these states of non-duality for us to work with our bodies, our tangible bodies and our temperaments for every different type of temperament and ultimately to even train our responses in daily life because when we put ourselves in compromised positions, we have yet another opportunity to respond to it in a different way. So I think that asanas are just metaphors for life. Each asana is actually named or uh, inspired by nature, whether it's tree pose or tortoise pose, all of these poses have this quality of being inspired by nature. And when we invite in these qualities of the asana into our own psyches, we begin to realize that we can take inspiration from nature and use that as a tool to cultivate our own responses in our daily lives. And so I think our personal practice must include asana for this reason. It's that it's a tool for self-purification. Almost like brushing your teeth, you know? The real reason I'm able to get on the mat every day is because I really know that I need to clean up my stuff, my mental, my emotional, my physical stuff that just accumulates every single day through the experiences and impressions that uh, accumulate during the day. And I need to have a tool for myself to come back to this state where I feel less scattered. I feel less all over the place. And I can come back to this groundedness, this sense of my physical body, the sense of really feeling grounded, embodied and being in the moment. And every asana is just a portal to access that. So the practice then becomes the teacher. So next time you're on the mat and you're trying to figure out why on earth you're contorting your body into all these different shapes, remember this. Remember that each of them is just a tool to access that ultimate state, to train your responses, and ultimately to find this sense of contentment, this sense that your body can do so much. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much. Namaste.